Yo, what's good, Titan Squad? What's good, Titan Clan? <laughs> I always, I don't know where Titan Squad came from. Um, it is your boy King Titan X back here with another video. Last video didn't do so well. Um, but I still want you guys to up those views. Come on, people, get them views up. But I have something to say. I'm going to be doing like the next part of what if Deku was Raven's brother. Hopefully I can like finish this in the next one to two parts or something along those lines. But um, let me know what other what ifs you want to see in the future though. Uh, comment down below. It'll help with the algorithm. And hopefully we can get that community tab up and running soon as well. YouTube still hasn't given me that yet. For whatever reason, I don't know. But enough rambling, let's get back into the what if. Like, I remember, like, the last time that we left off with this what if. Basically, what happened was that Raven ended up meeting her brother. And she actually trained him in and actually mastering his abilities to where he wouldn't just constantly be absorbing negative energy. Considering what happened back at the uh, USJ. And Deku is actually nicer now as well. That, that's something I forgot to comment on, I think. And Deku actually became nicer because of that. That seemed to have an effect on his personality, the amount of negative energy that he was absorbing into himself passively throughout the days. Because of all the negative energy they were absorbing, it had, it had an effect on his mentality, on, on his emotions, all of that. So that's basically what ended up changing on top of the fact that Deku was still able to dominate throughout the sports festival, unlike Canon. If you wanted to know exactly what he did, be sure to watch the last play over again and up them views. But I ended up leaving off on Deku about to fight Todoroki, his foster brother. And that's yeah, I'm gonna call it foster brother because adoptive brother song sounds more of a mouthful <laughs> but yeah basically what happened is that it, Deku would be able to fight Todoroki Todoroki would try and fight Izuku but Izuku is just too strong for Todoroki in general whenever Todoroki tries to use his ice powers against whenever Todoroki tries to use his ice powers against Izuku Azuku would just use like his fire manipulation, his energy manipulation abilities in order to to literally just melt the ice. And it's just like a wave of water just hits Azuku. Unless he decides to up the heat on the energy blasts and it just becomes, well, simply put, steam. It just evaporates, honestly. Todoroki would grow frustrated and Izuku would say that yeah, Todoroki you have no way of winning against me. This is something that you should know. And Todoroki would tell Izuku to just shut his mouth and that he would win against him no matter what. He is sick of his He is sick of his antics. He's sick of Izuku. And he He just always seemed to get more attention than than him for whatever reason. Oh, from like the worst person imaginable as well Endeavor he didn't understand why he would Even like Endeavor especially with all that he did to Do to their family. He just broke up their family everything. That's why Todoroki doesn't like Azuku and because Not necessarily because of Azuku himself, but because of Endeavor He hates his father and because of his hatred towards his father, that ends up getting projected onto Izuku as well. Izuku notices this negative energy that Todoroki is just exuding. And would try to reason with him, try and explain that he doesn't really know what exactly Endeavor did to, uh, did to Todoroki. He doesn't know why Todoroki really hates him. And to him... Like sure, he may have been been strong and all of that. He may have maybe pushed him around a little bit, but overall, he didn't see that. 
he didn't see that Todoroki really had much of a good reason to hate to hate him. He understood why he would probably hate Endeavor after after he explained after he tried explaining everything that Endeavor probably did to him. But Izuku still doesn't see why Todoroki hates him exactly. The fight will go on, Izuku will continue to dominate. Every time Todoroki uses his ice, the same thing happens, and Todoroki grows more and more frustrated throughout the whole fight. Izuku will just look at Todoroki and just look in disappointment, honestly. Because in Todoroki, he was meant to be strong, like, he was literally bred to be strong. But Izuku was just bred to be something different. He was just something entirely different. And from his talks with from his talks with Raven, he tur it turns out that he was like quite demon or something along those lines. So that ended up being something interesting to Izuku as well. He couldn't really compare himself to Todoroki because, well. Deku isn't even completely human to be to be honest <laughs> and so so like when it comes on to strength his his views on strength are completely different and to Todoroki Todoroki would try and try again something that Deku had to acknowledge about Todoroki was the fact that he did not give up that was something very admirable admirable about Todoroki throughout this fight every time that Deku tried to push him down and Todoroki will continue to get up even when he was starting to get frostbite frostbite all over his body he was still trying to fight Azuku although in a pretty terrible manner he was literally just spamming ice attacks at Azuku Azuku ended up literally just using his telekinesis on Todoroki at one point and just lifted him up into the sky. He looked, he glared at Todoroki saying that, alright, here's the thing little kid. There is absolutely no point in trying to just spam these ice attacks anymore. Use your fire side to at the very least warm your body up. Because with, at, because at the rate that you're going, you're going to probably die. And he was actually starting to squeeze Todoroki and his telekinetic voice field of the sorts. And Todoroki would start to feel his muscles starting to tighten. He would start to feel very, very constricted. And would try to move, but, well, simply put, Azuku was put was dampening his powers while well, dampening his movement I should say not necessarily powers Todoroki would eventually be forced to use his fire side He'll be forced to use his fire side and when he does he launches it at Izuku Izuku actually smiles seeing this and is like good job brother and then just throws him to the other side using his telekinesis he doesn't even like move his arms throughout the whole entire fight. He literally just stands still the whole entire fight. He just has his arms folded just watching Todoroki even using his telekinesis and to have an effect on Todoroki. When he throws him he doesn't throw him out of the, out of the ring. He just throws him to the other side of the other ring. I shouldn't say ring but more like the platform I guess. Because we've seen that it's more of a square, more like a rectangle, than a ring, a circle. But it's whatever, really. Um, Todoroki would, uh, Todoroki would get up, and pick himself up, and launch another fire attack at Izuku. Um, but this one was incredibly powerful, and he incre there was an incredibly intense amount of heat from the fire that Todoroki was producing. It actually managed to warm Todoroki's whole body up to an extreme amount. And he ended up using his his eyesight as well, causing causing like a rapid expansion of air. A rapid expansion of air to 
to basically cause a burst of energy to be released, which was enough to actually throw both Todoroki and Azuku back. Azuku ended up using his telekinesis in order to in order to stop himself from falling out of the ring and actually you know, flies back and he actually even picks up Todoroki as well brings him back to the ring before they can even um, they can even get too close from making it out of the ring he doesn't want the fight to be over just yet he wants to fight Todoroki some more now that he is using his fire side he's using both sides of his quirk he knows that Todoroki may not necessarily be as strong as himself but he can uh, be some form of good entertainment he wanted to see just how far Todoroki was willing to go because this was probably like the most alive Todoroki had ever been in Azuku's eyes and he appreciated that he wanted to see just how far Todoroki could go he would try and try Todoroki would continue to use more of his fire. Todoroki would even start sending out fireballs. He would, he would have to quickly adapt. He would quickly, he would have to quickly learn how to use his fire side in this battle because Suzuku was basically dominating, and he wouldn't let Todoroki just lose yet. Uh, Todoroki was getting exhausted. He he used fireballs. He used um. He sent he sent rays of fire a fire. He used everything in his arsenal, anything that he could think of, in order to actually pose a sort of challenge towards Suzuku. Although he knew that the likelihood of him even winning this battle at this point was very low, especially with how he was low on energy. He was using his his eyesight as well, trying to make another another one of those moves, trying to blast him back. But Azuku wasn't having it. wasn't having it this time. Uh, Todoroki would just use his eyes in order to hopefully distract Azuku, then use his fire side in order to send a blast at him. Azuku actually took one of those blasts at one point. And Todoroki had uh, a bit of hope that actually worked on Izuku, only for the smoke to dissipate and show that Izuku was unharmed. He actually absorbed that fire and he just sent it right back at Todoroki, but 10 times stronger for crying out loud. <laughs> Anyways, after like a good... 20 to 30 minutes of more fighting, Azuku would finally let Todoroki just lose and just fall out of the ring. And Todoroki would fall down in exhaustion. He would actually go unconscious from being so tired and overusing his quirk, both sides of it. The next battle would be Azuku versus Bakugo. Azuku wouldn't have much of an interest for Bakugo, honestly. Azuku would just go ahead and just pimp slap Bakugo away. Um, Bakugo would just use his explosion quirk in order to stop himself from falling out of the ring. What he would do instead is to actually uh, send, send more explosions. He would send more explosions towards Azuku, but I don't know how to say it. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, I basically was mentioning um, Deku versus Bakugo. Bakugo would try and send more explosions at Azuku after he made sure that he didn't fall out of the ring. But Azuku's uh, intimidating presence, his overbearing presence. It just wouldn't really work on Izuku. Um, Bakugo's explosions would simply be absorbed, although the although the force of the energy now uh, wasn't able to be absorbed by Izuku. The the fire part of that ability that was actually absorbed into Izuku. Izuku would just send his explosions back, just not necessarily with with the force of the explosions. The ex Oh my gosh, the 
the airplane. So basically what ended up happening was with the force of the explosions, uh, that wouldn't be absorbed by Izuku. Izuku would send back the the flame part of the explosions, the burning aspect of the explosions back at Bakugo. Bakugo would be unable to really match against that. He wouldn't be able to really... He wouldn't really be able to to block them. He wouldn't be able to tank those that explosion, the explosion energy, the the burning aspect of his explosions being sent back at him with ten times the force. But what he was able to do was to actually dodge them. He was actually able to fly up into the sky using his explosions and uh, try and. He would actually end up trying to use the Hawitsu impact on Izuku only for Izuku to just cancel out that whole ability of Bakugos and one of Bakugos ultimate moves just immediately being cancelled by Izuku because he ended up absorbing all of the fire from the from the impact and of course it just wouldn't work without the fire. Without the fire, he's unable to actually really do much of anything anymore. With everything being absorbed, he only had the kinetic force of the energy left, but that was already throwing Bakugo off without the fire aspect. Without the fire aspect, there was nothing left. The kinetic force wasn't able to really do much to Azuku. It, well sure, it may have pushed him back a bit, but that was pretty much it, unfortunately. And Deku would actually end up being the ultimate champion of the sports festival, winning in literally all three rounds. Well, all three parts of the festival, like the, the obstacle course, the cavalry battle, and the tournament aspect of the, well, sports festival. Azuku winning all of those would, would be like, um, how should I say it? He'll be scouted by many, many heroes. But which hero does he go with? First, we would actually need to figure out Deku's name and Deku's hero name in this what if, though. What Deku ends up naming himself when it comes on to. When it comes on to midnight coming into the classroom and just asking about their names, basically trying to to get everybody to find a name for themselves, Deku actually goes with a very interesting name here. He goes with the with like the ravenous hero. Um, actually, no, scratch that. You guys come up with a name in the comments. As for ships. I've seen you guys constantly asking about this, and you know what I'll, I'll do? Man! I still don't know a ship, to be honest. Like, I'm not too fond of a female Tokunyami. Um, but it seems like I kind of am. <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Um, you guys choose in the comments between these characters. I'm a female Tokunyami. Toga and shoot, I don't actually got no. I actually have nobody else. All right, Himiko Toga, female Tokuyami, and what whatever any and any other character you think of. Let me know in the comments below which one you're going with. The one with the most likes wins. That that's how I'm gonna do it. You guys comment and you guys comment below what ship who shouldn't Azuku be shipped in with shipped with in this what if and we will actually uh, go by the likes. Whoever has the most likes uh, for the ship, guess what? That's going to be Azuku's ship in this what if. But going further on, we're going to have to say that when it comes on to just how Azuku fights. Um Oh yeah, also when it comes down to like the names as well, whoever has the, whoever has the most likes for Azuku's hero name, that will end up being Deku's hero name in this what if. 
so what happens later on is obviously the fight against Sane. But we will also need to figure out which hero Azuku would intern with. I'm going to say that Azuku actually interns with a very interesting hero to be honest. I'm going to say that he ends up training under... I have no idea. So you know what we're going to do? <laughs> He ends up interning and he ends up interning underneath this new interesting hero. This hero just popped out of nowhere and just started and causing a storm. This guy This guy kinda even looks like a Zuku. This guy has this guy has horns like a Zuku who has like he has like about four eyes. But but those but like um how should I say it? When it comes down to those four eyes, they aren't necessarily arranged the same way as Azuku's own. Not necessarily the same way as as Trigon's own. His four eyes are just there. Like Scratch that he does not have four eyes. He just has two yellow eyes. That's the thing about it. And when it comes on to his hair and pretty plain honestly he just has horns and a darker skin tone but with but he also has white white hair so this his this hero has been causing a storm in japan lately this guy has been this guy is like the second coming of all might that's what people are saying now and this guy is basically being called a demon by the by the villains because of just how strong he is. Some people are saying that he can probably even be All Might with how strong he is. Some people are speculating. But what we're going to say is that Deku actually interns under this hero. This hero is interesting. Very, very interesting. I want what ends up happening later though. When Izuku ends up interning under this hero. This hero just gives us some very weird vibes to Izuku. This guy, it just seems to be the pinnacle of negative energy. It's like, like when Izuku actually interns under him, he doesn't understand why he seems so negative. Why his aura is just so negative for some reason. But Azuku decides to shrug it off for right now. Although, although when it comes on to just how powerful this guy is, that's the main reason Azuku ended up interning under him. Sure, he he's not necessarily in the top ten heroes. Well, not yet. That is because he's just a recent player. He just joined like a couple months ago. So it's kind of hard for Zuku to tell what his rankings are. Although from the looks of it, he's been rising in the ranks quite quite fast. Not necessarily top 10 yet, but he he, he has been making a storm in Japan. I don't know why I keep on saying storm. <sighs> last but not least, what I'm going to say is that Deku would actually still end up in Hosu. Deku actually meets up in Hosu with Ida and and Todoroki. Uh, Deku Deku would actually meet them while they are trying to fight um Stain. He saw the whole mess happening and is actually absorbing this negative energy and then just releasing it back out at the Nomus trying to take them out as fast as possible when he ends up finding Ida and Todoroki they are on the ground about to be killed by Stain he's about to he's about to do something he's about to release uh, release a blast and um Stain he's about to use his telekinesis he's about to use anything against Stain in order to stop him from actually killing both Ida and 
and Todoroki. But what ends up happening is the strange character I mentioned before, he actually pops up and grabs Stain by the face. And what is revealed? He actually changes his form and what what Izuku sees shakes him to his core. Trigon, his father. Trigon, his father, is here in the flesh. Wow. That's right. Trigon is in the, is in this realm now. <laughs> and that's all I got for right now, y'all. Um, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.